ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Agent West Trail and Adventures. It seems like self-balancing things are all the rage right now in Trailmakers. So how about we build something? But unlike having three or even two wheels, or heck, even one standard wheel, let's build something that is a wheel. So to do that, let's get the armored seat since it is the heaviest. Now, one thing I've discovered recently is that the helicopter engine V2 or Mark II or whatever you want to call it, makes for a fairly decent bearing and it takes up a lot less space than what was used previously which is the spin and servo the spin and servo in case you didn't know sort of acts like a bearing if you take away the button assignments same goes for the helicopter engine by the way to get it to truly freewheel you need to take away the buttons but i'm thinking about using it as propulsion come to think of it a helicopter engine would not be the best idea just because it is so small it would be more beneficial to have the spin and servo that provides a little bit of offset to build the frame of the wheel so it's not touching and therefore not sticking to the seat this should be big enough to be efficient yet small enough to be fairly simple and hopefully not glitch out all right well cue the build montage And that should do it. As for self-balancing, let me take this thing out for a test drive and we'll see what happens. Although the easiest thing would be to just give it some more girth and not worry about self-stabilization, but where's the fun in that? Although, looking at it, I see one problem. Right side is all right because there is nothing there. However, on the left side, we got this framework that holds the wheel on. And if I use just a typical uh, sensor on a pivot that looks at the ground, then every time this frame will come around, it's gonna, it's gonna confuse that sensor and bad things will happen. So, another build montage? is to put a helicopter engine to use as a hinge and a couple of gimbal jets up on top to keep this whole wheel upright and yeah it works it even kind of turns kind of but it does stabilize eventually however i can hear some of you typing already about how this is not really in the spirit of self-balancing -balanc things because Let's face it, if we're, if we're allowed to use gimbal jets to support a thing directly, then, well, pretty much anything can be balanced. Alright, fine. Oh, 
Okay, seriously, what is going on? <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Stop it. Up. And up the wibble wobbles. Good. Not good. There's a wool in the way. It is possible to sort of work with it and counter steer a little bit, keep it stabilized, but it's not not really easy, for lack of a better word. After spending some more time on this project, I finally figured out a way to make a mono wheel that is fairly stable and surprisingly simple for for what it is. The way this one works is, well, the gray frame, as you can see, is a little bit wider than it was before. That is to accompany a thick yellow frame that goes up to a helicopter engine that serves as a pivot point for basically a pendulum. That is the heaviest seat we got, which is the indestructible seat, and four 50 kilogram blocks of weight, and another helicopter engine on the bottom that serves to turn this contraption left and right. Now, the sensors that you see uh, above the seat they are set in a way so that one sensor triggers if the seat swings too close to the yellow frame the other triggers if the seat swings too far away once the, once either of the sensors trigger they make the helicopter engine at the top tilt the entire pendulum the entire seat counterweights everything one way or the other therefore stabilizing the monowheel of course, the system does have its limitations, but so far, this has been the most stable mono wheel I have built. As you can see, the sensors blink, and they help to keep the wheel stable. Of course, as I say that, the wheel falls over. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Now, I'll have to not go as fast. Hopefully, that'll work. I have to not go as fast, period. But uh, with light touches on the steering, I can... Steer it. When it gets a little bit out of hand, it's best to let it just stop and stabilize itself. Then once it's stabilized, it can be turned. And then it can go forward. Although it does take a little bit of rocking it backwards and forth because the frame uh, that's above the main pivot point is fairly heavy. Alright, it's getting a little bit out of hand, so I'm going to let it stabilize. Now turn. Go forward. The added benefit of this way of stabilization is that the weight always tends to stay within the wheel, within the rim. So even while, let's say, driving forward, the weight will not try to pull to one side. The weight will stay in line with the wheel, which is good for stability of this contraption. And even somewhat turn it while it's moving, although I've got to be really careful or this happens. Turn around. Gotta be real gentle with it because as narrow as it is, the wheel is really unstable.
And there we go, that's a monorail. Completing a slalom course. 